Hello everybody, this is George Runkel with Runkel Consulting Incorporated, Structural Engineers, and today I'm going to talk about building a computer for structural engineering. This uh, build may work for other branches of engineering where you have to do a lot of calculations using finite element analysis. I don't know if it will work well for civil engineering where you're doing uh, point clouds from surveys and uh, doing terrain topographic stuff but it probably will work out really well for mechanical engineering where you're doing a lot of heavy-duty calculations. So let's go ahead and go. First we're going to talk about um, what I'm doing mostly is finite element analysis and some pretty complex structures use it made out of shipping containers. And I'm using Bentley RAM elements because it allowed me to build the members, the custom members that are in the shipping containers and then run the analysis of the overall structure. The problem is, is this t software takes a long time to run. You build the model, if it's a very complex building, it can take an hour and a half just for the analysis stage and another an hour for the design stage. So what I want to do is I want to cut the time down as much as possible. The other thing that we do on this in this office is work with Revit. And Revit is very resource intensive also if you're doing a 3D model. This is a fairly simple design drawing I did for opening up a doorway in a house. But we also have some other stuff that gets pretty difficult like this container structure and uh, the graphics are pretty intensive and if you don't have the proper computer just what I did can take some time to switch between views and it's also very disk intensive so that considered let's go on and talk about what I built this is a custom computer because I didn't see what I wanted buy and directly from Dell. Now it takes a bit of time to build your own custom computer if you've got a larger firm you may want to have a consultant actually build the computer for you or if you've got an IT guy let him build it. Uh, sucking up one of your engineers time may not be the most valuable way to do it. I used to work for a large, what is now a very large engineering firm, one of the ENR 500s, but at the time it was a small firm and we hired a guy to build the computers we used and I brought up to the CEO well I could do that what he's doing and I know what we do why don't you let me do all the work and he said simple your time is billable we do better letting you do engineering for us and hiring this guy to come in and do the IT work for us he does what he does best you do what you do best and I, I understand that thought process for me though, right now, it makes sense to build the computer. This is only a two-man firm right now, myself and my son. My son has an associate's degree in IT, and I've got quite a bit of work in computers, so it works out. So let's get started. Let's talk about what we've got. I built it around the fastest processor I could get. I got the Intel i9, and this is the... Um, i9 9XO 9980XE 3 gigahertz 7 you know so on and so on you can see here on the label it's expensive as hell list price out of uh, micro center was two thousand dollars it was on sale like 200 bucks off got it with the motherboards so I got a little bit more of a discount too, like another 30 bucks discount you get whatever you can right now you can get the Ryzen processors, the 3000 series I believe it is, and they are rated as being faster than Intel processors, but I don't know if they're going to work for software such as Bentley RAM Elements. The other software by Bentley that a lot of people use is STAD, which is using, I believe, the same kernel as RAM Elements. Both of these software go right into the language for Intel. I have had computers with AMD processors where I've tried to use multi-core processing for the analysis and the program wouldn't do it because it would only work with Intel. So I suspect you have to use an Intel processor. I didn't want to take a chance and spending money for an AMD processor and finding out it didn't give me any advantage. I went with the Intel. Again, if you have a big firm, you might want to build two different computers, one with the AMD Ryzen processor, one with the Intel run the same structural model on the two computers. The analysis phase, at least with Bentley, tells you how long it takes to run it, see which one runs faster, and then go with that. 
but I didn't have the kind of time or money to do that experiment. So anyway, let's talk further about the build. This is under here, and I swear, as expensive as this is, when I picked it up, I felt like I was picking up plutonium. I felt like I was loading a nuclear reactor with hot uranium. I was nervous because I, you know, I have already screwed up a motherboard by not putting in the processor right. I didn't want to break anything. But anyway, got that done. So I have that. I have fully loaded the motherboard with memory. This has got 128 gigabytes of memory. Seriously, you can't have too much memory when you're doing this type of applications because if you're running, if you're anything like me, you're going to run a number of applications at the same time. You don't want to slow your machine down. Also, with Revit, having a lot of memory speeds it up because it doesn't have to keep reading from the disk. So you definitely want to do that. Next thing, I have as a graphics card, if you look at Autodesk's site, you look at what they recommend for Revit and for AutoCAD, they recommend a Quadro Pro card. A Quadro Pro cards are insanely expensive. I mean, absurdly costly for what you're getting. For a two gigabyte card, you pay a ridiculous amount of money. And there are gaming cards that are much cheaper. And I went and read a lot of different blogs, and one blog I found suggested just using a gaming card. The key is, is Autodesk is only tested the Quadro Pro cards. They haven't tested other cards. The Autodesk graphics engine they're using, the graphics language is OpenGL language. It's used by every graphics card that's manufactured. So what I did is I got a Radeon RX 580 card with 8 gigabytes of memory. I definitely recommend a lot of gigabytes on the card. I noticed it makes RAM, um, not RAM, but Revit run faster and it's easy to see. It's loading up all the graphics and the memory on the card. I had an older card. I forget which brand it was. I think it was NVIDIA, but it only had two gigabytes of memory and it was slow. So you definitely want to get eight gigabytes of memory. The RX 580 wasn't hatefully expensive and it works quite well. I haven't seen any difference. Now, if you're doing a lot of rendering and graphics like that, you might need to actually go with the Quadro Pro card, but this is a structural engineering practice. We're not doing extreme rendering or anything like that. The most rendering that I'm going to do is something like this where I'm coloring a model so I can get an idea of what's happening. Okay, so let's go to the next phase. Hard drive. I got this Samsung solid state hard drive. It, the Samsung solid state hard drives are rated very well for reliability. Um, I think this is a 580. I don't remember exactly. It's two terabytes of memory. It's expensive as hell, but I didn't want to skimp on that. There is a cheap Intel two terabyte hard drive, uh, solid state drive, but it has some pretty bad reviews as far as reliability. So I went with the Samsung and uh, I think it was a good move. The thing is, is if you use in Revit, it takes a long time to load that model off the hard drive. If you have a faster hard drive, that helps speed up your Revit if you're going back and forth between models and projects. Also, RAM Elements loads up faster, the machine boots up faster, and it's more reliable. There's not mechanical parts that can break down on a no, regular mechanical hard drive, so it's not going to give you a crash as often as a hard drive can. The other thing is, is I've got um, Google Drive Direct where all my files are up on and the directory for the projects for this year are also local. So that helps a lot with not having a lot of files locally filling up the hard drive and it helps with the reliability is that if I do get some sort of a destroyed computer I've got all my files saved on the Google server. Bit of warning though, during the recession when I was having a lot of trouble in this firm, I didn't make my payments to Google on time and they started deleting files. So, if you're going to go to Google to hold your documents in the cloud, don't forget to pay your bills on that. Now, final thing. When I got this computer together, oh, one more thing, cooling the processor. You're seeing here, cooler, it's an NZXT Kraken. It's got two fans 
and a radiator. This was rated very high in all the reviews I read, and it deserves it. The fans can speed up, and it stays quiet. It's done a very nice job of cooling the computer. I've also got two fans blowing air into the case, and the way I've worked it is the fans here are blowing the air from outside the inside the case out. I know you can also do it sucking cool air in, but my problem with that is if you bring in the cool air in over this radiator, you're heating the inside of the case up. And my thoughts are if I blow air into the case, I'm keeping it cool enough here and the air going through the radiator is not that hot because I'm pulling in air pretty quick and it's much more efficient uh, given my knowledge of thermodynamics. And our final thing is we get into overclocking. It doesn't work if you're using RAM elements. I tried overclocking the computer and I kept having RAM elements come back not going through the model, giving me an error message, uh, you know, some sort of error message unable to access and some hexadecimal address and crash over and over again. So I had to go to an earlier model of RAM, an earlier version of RAM elements. It worked a little bit better, but still it occasionally would crash with the vague error message, error reaching, and some hexadecimal address. And it was just by accident I discovered that overclocking the processor screws up the operation of RAM elements on a complex model. And I suppose it'll do the same on STAD. I had tried overclocking to 5 gigahertz. The machine was unstable, so I was throttling it down. I got to like 4.8 and the machine seemed to be doing good. I ran the RAM elements model, it crashed. And then I, but the, pro, uh, the, the machine didn't crash, the computer model, the RAM elements model crashed and gave me that same vague error message. So I started running the processor down lower and lower and I found that I no longer had the model crashing. I didn't get the vague uh, error message and so we are now running at 3.7 gigahertz. And it is slower, but it's more stable. It's not generating the heat. I can open a number of programs without hurting the stability of the computer and generating so much heat. So it's a decent trade-off. I have an i7 computer I have in my home office, and I found it was get it, giving me the same error messages being overclocked with RAM elements. I throttled it down to what the re uh, the stock speed was of the processor and it quit giving me the error messages, the vague error messages, and it went through the models. So that's just one of the things you're going to have to do and I suspect that any other high-end finite element programs that are written to go directly into the processor to speed them up are going to give you the same problem. That pretty much concludes everything. You notice that I have a 43 inch monitor here I really recommend that. It's really good for doing CAD. This is a 27 inch, which looks rather dinky next to the 43 inch. Ultimately, I think I'll probably have two 43 inch in models here. And I have spent some money for a decent microphone so I can call people using the computer and Skype. And I have a decent uh, webcam, high definition again for video conferencing works pretty well and I would spend the money for that and definitely the microphone makes a big difference I hate holding the phone up to my ear so sometimes I'll make phone calls on the computer using this microphone it doesn't pick up echoing around the office it has a nice sound to it so it works out really well and I hope this video was helpful to you if you have any questions put them in the comments below I will try to answer them and uh, you have a great day. Take care. Bye.